About a year ago in February, I bought a PC without knowing anything about PCs and I ended up buying a pre-built. Recently, I decided to upgrade my RAM. However, when I turned my PC back on, the PC wouldn't boot. I'm a computer noob and have just recently started learning this stuff. And when I tried to reset my BIOS, the PC still wouldn't boot. I recently came across your channel and saw your series on fixing viewers' computers. I don't have the money to replace the PC nor get it fixed. If you could take a look at it or even give me a few tips on how I could fix this, it would be very much appreciated. This is that viewer's broken gaming PC, and yes, it is most definitely a pre-built. Not only does this have a proprietary power supply, and not only does it have a proprietary motherboard, it also has a proprietary case. These cutouts are specific to this motherboard. I wager we'll face some headaches with this one. If it's not powering on at all, it's likely a power supply or a motherboard issue, and it's not like I just have HP products laying around to swap in, so we might need to overhaul quite a bit of this system if we really want it to get up and running and to be upgradable in the future. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're sick of seeing that same Activate Windows watermark over and over, head on over to VIP SCD Key, where they have Windows 10 and 11 Pro OEM keys at a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say goodbye to the watermark. And be sure to use your offer code SKGS for that sweet discount. Hey there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. If you're new, just know that everything you see us do in this series is free of charge to the owners, including our labor, including part swaps. The reason why we're able to keep things this way is because of your viewerships. So thank you so much for that. Uh, if you do live in and around Orlando, Florida, and you have a broken system you'd like to have us look at, again, for free, be sure to reach out via the form in the video description. Now, for a bit of backstory into this rig. The owner is a young kid, and I could tell he didn't fully understand how Fix or Flop worked. He thought, for example, that part swaps we're gonna cost him money. So when I let him know that, he was like, oh, well, in that case, you can work on it at your earliest convenience. I thought I was gonna have to pay for things if it came to part swaps, and I wanted to save up some money before before it got to that point. Um, so he is just a, a really genuine guy. I, again, I, I enjoyed talking to him when we met, and uh, I am, I, I, I would normally, I should say, be reluctant to work on something like this. And the reason why is because of the proprietary components. It, it really does corner you. Either the power supply is dead and I have to replace it with an equivalent power supply, which might also break down the line, although some of these units are actually pretty good in these pre-builds, uh, or the motherboard is dead and I have to hunt on eBay to find the exact board that fits not only the rear I.O. but also the front I.O. because this case has dedicated front and rear I.O. cutouts. It's just insane how proprietary this stuff is. It's great for HP in the manufacturing sense because it all just fits, but when it comes to actually working on broken pre-builds like this, it can really put a strain on the process. But with this owner, like I said, young kid, super genuine. I didn't see any red flags and I'm usually pretty savvy about that because you get a lot of freeloaders doing what we do for free in the area. Um, I accepted the fact that this might cascade into a multiple upgrade scenario due to the proprietary nature of the pre-built. All right, so that backstory out of the way, let's get to, uh, while well, the actual troubleshooting, we're gonna fire this up or at least attempt to for a starting point. Here we go then, power strip on, power cable here to the unit. I don't know why I connected this portable monitor. Apparently this isn't gonna fire up at all anyway. I did hear a bit of a sound though. It sounded like it came from the power supply. Let's see. Uh, nope, doesn't look like Anything at all is happening. Okay, well, at least we're on the same page. I wanna start with the most obvious stuff first. I wanna bypass the button physically, so no power there. We can jump the pins. It's gonna to be tough to get it at this angle. But we can jump the pins underneath this switch and close the circuit manually and still nothing. You can see a few of the proprietary connectors in here, two four pins for the motherboard in place of what you'd normally see as a 24 pin. Uh, this all is connected. Same goes for the standard four pin CPU power cable up top. Now, unfortunately our inline power supply tester only works with standard connections. So we can't simply just plug this in without adapters. What I will say though, is that when we connect power, you can hear a quick little surge. It sounds like capacitors are being charged. That's usually a good sign. I would say that uh, we're probably looking at a motherboard issue at this point. It's gonna be very difficult to actually diagnose some of this stuff without direct replacements. Oh, whoops, I just realized, so this black cable is actually just for SATA power. It's not actually uh, powering anything on the motherboard side. I believe this power cable right here is the proprietary one. So at this point, our only real option is to begin removing components that aren't pertinent to the power on self test process. So the discrete graphics card, even though it won't get picture out, the system should still power on in an otherwise 
healthy setting. Uh, we can remove storage, that's not vital either. We can remove DDR4. You won't get a post without DDR4, but it, you should still be able to power the system on without it. And at that point, we'll have narrowed it down to either the CPU, motherboard, or power supply. I expect it's gonna be one of those three, if not multiple. We can also take this time to test, say the graphics card, independent of this rig in a separate system. It's a little bit rusty in there. There we go. We can also remove this storage drive, one small Phillips screw, and out she goes. But as you can see, still doesn't want to play ball. I suppose we should spend a few minutes on this RAM since this is what was being upgraded around the time the system quit working. Uh, it is a bit strange that just upgrading this uh, is what killed the system, but uh, we should inspect around this area especially. From what I can see so far, this module looks to be okay, and the dim slots look to be in good shape, albeit a bit dusty. We can clean these out later. Will she power on now? Nope. Still nothing. So now we've taken out the power supply. I am assuming this is okay since I could hear those capacitors charging. At least that's what it sounded like. Uh, we can probably open this up and probe in a few places. I wonder if there's a way to jump this. I think the only place to jump it would be here on this four pin. I'll have to look it up. A few moments later. Whew. Thank you, Level 1 Text Forum. Wendell, you are a lifesaver with the site. Uh, looks like we can jump it. We have to use the smaller connector I showed you earlier. Looks like this bottom green wire is power on, and if we close the circuit with ground up top, we should get some sign of life from the unit if it works. I've got this shot overexposed in hopes that you can see the fan spin if indeed this works. I'm gonna try to jump it with uh, some needle nose pliers here. Okay, that should be on. But that fan is spinning when we close that circuit. So I think there's probably nothing wrong with this because it wasn't spinning earlier when it was connected to the motherboard and we were trying to power on that way. We could permanently jump the unit and then measure voltage from the 12 volt line with a multimeter, but we're already seeing what we didn't see earlier with it. So I don't think we should spend much more time there. Our real issue, I suspect, is this thing. One quick thing we can check is this battery voltage with a multimeter, but at just over three volts, this thing is good and charged up. There isn't much left to test, so out comes the platform. I'm gonna try to rule out the CPU first. You can see that this cooler actually looks like an Intel one with the standard kind of squared off uh, cooler mount, but it's actually AM4. I'm gonna clean off this paste. It's uh, definitely a bit overboard here. Give the surrounding area a quick bath with isopropyl alcohol. This won't hurt. It's all evaporate before we ever attempt to power this back on. Don't worry. Yeah, I'd say cleaning was warranted. On the CPU side of things, there is a bit of thermal paste bleed over, especially here on the bottom left, but this is a... Uh... This is not gonna prevent the system from posting. The pins themselves look fine, nothing missing and nothing bent. And same goes for the socket. There is a bit of uh, excess thermal paste bleeding over the sides, but the pinholes themselves look to be all clean. Now, at mild risk of burning my house down, uh, we're going to force power from the power supply through this board by jumping the power pins that correspond to the header uh, that we jumped earlier. I should say the header, the, the connector that we jumped earlier. So we got the fans to spin. I think the power supply is fine. Disclosure though, I did this off camera before I started filming and uh, I smelled rotten eggs. Hydrogen sulfide, melting plastic, something like that. I couldn't narrow down where it was coming from. I'm going to try one more time here. I'm really hoping that nothing bad happens, but I just want to see if I can replicate this once more. So right there. Mm. Yeah. I can't tell. I can't tell where that's coming from, but it's not good. Um, this board is shot, which it was, wouldn't be the first HP motherboard to kick the can recently. And so this is where the cascading effect begins. When we replace the motherboard, we have to also replace this power supply and this case. But not to worry, our partners at Be Quiet have sent components for this very reason. This is a Pure Power 12M 850 watt power supply, fully modular, 80 plus gold efficiency. You guys know the routine. Excellent warranties with these as well. Peace of mind. It's way more wattage than he currently needs with his GPU CPU combo, but that's the point. I want to make 
make sure that he's set up for upgrades down the line. One thing he won't have to worry about in the future is a power supply. As for the case, we'll get to that as well, but we can't get ahead of ourselves. We have a lot of older components here from this HP pre-built that we haven't tested yet. We need to make sure that those work before we assemble it all into a new chassis. This is his motherboard upgrade. It's a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro V2. Big shout out to them, by the way. They've sent so many motherboards for the series. We've gone through more boards than I ever thought we would, and they've been very gracious, and they've just sent like, I think half a dozen or more uh, so far. So uh, show them some love in the description if you guys would. We've got his 5600G in here, the original CPU, or APU I should say, his original DDR4 DIMM, but again, new board, also the new power supply, the Pure 12 M, and uh, we're gonna see if uh, it powers on. Got a fan connected here just for a visual demonstration of power on, power on at the rear. We're gonna jump the two power pins up front. Boy, that's a good sign. Boots up right away. Debug LEDs are on right now, VGA is illuminated. We should get a post, that's a post right away. All right, gonna power it off. It did warm up as well. Uh, wasn't alarmingly hot, but I don't recommend you turn systems on without coolers attached unless you're only doing it for a very short amount of time. So uh, working CPU, working DDR4. The DDR4 is less important though because we do have that replacement kit that the viewer had already ordered and tried to put into his original board. Uh, so we can now move on to the graphics card and the M.2 drive. Once those two are out of the way, we can go ahead and assemble everything. And I, I'm actually, very, very pleasantly surprised that the CP was still alive. So here goes storage. Here goes his RX 5500. And here goes his new kit of DDR4. This is uh, the Vengeance LPX kit, 16 gigs this time around. I highly doubt this is what killed his board. They visually look okay, but uh, we're about to find out. This is for all the beans. Uh, if we can get this to turn on, then basically everything that is not proprietary has been saved. Uh, it turned on automatically, whatever, not a big deal. I've got the HDMI cable uh, connected to the discrete card now. Just checking to make sure CPU doesn't overheat. Come on now, yes, there it is. Okay, that's it, that's all we need to see. That is our post and we've confirmed it. Everything non-proprietary still works. Doesn't it suck that it's the proprietary stuff that tends to fail in these OEMs? That's one of the reasons why we hate them so much as PC repair technicians, PC builders in general. Like it's so difficult to source this stuff to begin with, especially brand new if you want new. And if the rig does end up dying, it's more often than not the proprietary stuff to blame. You just can't win. So what we're gonna do now is flash forward in time a bit. I've got a Be Quiet 500DX, which uh, is a great mid tower case that you guys have probably seen many times on the channel. We're gonna throw all of this into. Also can't forget a different cooler since the HP OEM mounting locations were different than traditional AM4 mounting locations. You see this is more rectangular. Uh, it's not squared off like it was in the HP one. We'll need to upgrade that as well. This will just take a second. Well. For, for you all, for me, it's gonna take about 30 minutes or so. Ready, three, two, one. Doesn't even look like the same build, does it? This has, I mean, it's totally transformed. The case has made such a big difference. I actually didn't realize that the uh, 500DX this time around that Be Quiet sent was a white one, but I'm actually glad that it was because we were able to throw in a white AIO as well. It contrasts nicely with the black motherboard and the black fans that are included in the case. This is one really good looking system, especially considering how affordable some of the vital hardware is in here. The 5600G is a very affordable APU at this point. I think the motherboard is actually more expensive than the APU. And the RX 5500 is a very affordable, very cheap graphics card. You can buy these used all day on eBay, or I believe under $100 nowadays. Um, it's not a card I would recommend for for solid 1080p and 1440p gaming for obvious reasons, but as an entry kind of starter graphics card, I don't see anything wrong with it. And there's definitely room to expand now in the future. In my opinion, this looks so much better than this, where we started. Not that there's anything wrong with this combination of hardware. Uh, if you wanna buy a pre-built and you can find it for a decent price, be my guest. Just know that there's gonna be uh, sort of barriers in the upgradability of a rig like that. Uh, the power supply and motherboard are gonna be the two big ones. Um, some pre-builds don't have these problems and those are the ones I generally recommend. Now, if you wanna go with like a boutique builder or something like NZXT BLD or uh, Corsair has their own building service, Origin PC, they use a lot of like mainstream hardware that is very upgradable if you ever wanted to approach that in the future. But when you buy from, say, HP or Dell or Lenovo, 
they're going to have some restrictions in place at times, and uh, it not only makes it difficult to troubleshoot, but it also makes it difficult to upgrade. We took care of all of that for the uh, owner here, so he won't have to worry about any of that in the future. His performance hasn't really changed much, but his upgrade path definitely has. I realized in the earlier clips I hadn't actually shown the system turning on and loading into Windows, but we are A-OK -okay now. Uh, the, the system's running fine. It is running a bit loud. I think we need to tweak the fan curves a bit. We'll enable uh, XMP or DOCP for him, and we'll be good to go. This has largely been a success. I really wish that I could tell you a bit more about what was wrong with that motherboard uh, in the original pre-built. I'm still not sure what exactly I was smelling, but it was a very rotten smell. It smelled like rotten eggs, it smelled like sulfur. Uh, and that's just nothing you ever want to smell around electronics. My rule of thumb there, if you ever come across something like that, just get rid of the entire component. Unless it's not cost effective, it would probably take me more than an hour or two to even fix, if I could fix that current board by soldering with you know, donor pieces or whatever. Um, I just, I'm not gonna bother with that. I'd rather just replace it outright. You know, I get complaints every now and then like, Greg, you're not actually fixing anything. You're just swapping components out. That is, that is what this is. We, we're fixing things. You don't have to fix on a board level to fix a system. Sometimes by replacing a motherboard and upgrading the process, you're doing more than just fixing. You're also prepping for upgrades down the line, creating more stable systems maybe. Maybe you're making better looking systems as well if you care about aesthetics. There's a lot that we can tackle just by upgrading the motherboard in question, which is exactly what we did here. I just wanted to explain that methodology a bit because I don't feel like it always translates uh, to, uh, to the bulk of my viewers. But uh, I wanna thank you all for watching this far into this one. I hope that I'll have a little Easter egg at the very end of this video. I'm gonna reach back out to the owner. He doesn't know what I've done to this yet. I'm not gonna send him a picture Picture of the rig, but I want to try to surprise him. He, again, he's a really cool kid, and I, I, I really thought he was genuine when we met, and so uh, I want to see if we can catch his reaction on camera. No promises. If the video just ends, I, he, he didn't agree to it, and I'm not going to hold that against him. If you don't want to be on camera, that's that's totally your right, but uh, I'm at least going to try. I'm going to see if he'll be okay with it. I think his reaction will be worth the watch. With that, thanks so much for watching. I'm just gonna end the video like I normally would. Again, check out the very end if there's anything there. Hopefully you like the way that this looks. I'm super happy with the result. It looks like a totally different system. And now that it's up and running again, I'd say mission accomplished. Consider subscribing, leaving a like, leave a comment down below, get involved. We've got uh, like Discord and Patreon, all those other things in the video description, along with some of the components that we've used to upgrade this system in the description as well. And I think that's about all I want to plug. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me. Okay, so he didn't agree to be on camera physically, which again, I totally respect, but he's okay with us uh, recording the audio of this reveal. So let's get to it. All right, so we've got Tyler here and we're going to reveal it right now. Yes, oh my gosh. <laughs> How's that look? That's amazing. I feel like a kid on Christmas Eve right now. Wow. <laughs> I'm so happy. This is like a blessing, man. Oh man, I'm really, I'm really glad that you're happy about it. I'm, that's all. That's awesome. I'm not the guy. So yeah, man. No, this thing it worked out really well. It's super clean. It's gonna have excellent cooling uh, for upgrades down down the line. Uh, you know, awesome. be quiet. I gotta hook you up with the be quiet stuff. They make yes. good stuff. So be quiet. Power supply. Be quiet. Case and uh, yeah, she should be ready to go. Windows is already still loaded on that drive. You said. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, should just be plug and play. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, man. not I, I a don't problem. I know how, I can't even word together. <laughs> I can't even put it together, man. No, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm really glad that you're happy with it. And, uh, hopefully you don't have any more issues, at least in the near future. That's fine. <laughs> the next thing I gotta upgrade is anything, my GPU, all that. Yeah, there you go. Like I said, yeah, the platform. Future. Exactly. Once you get any of that taken care of, I mean, you're gonna have a sweet system for years to come. And it's already a decent, you know, value rig as is. But uh, yeah, a lot of room for expandability now. And uh, yeah, if you do have any troubles with it, you know, just give me another holler. You got my number. Yes. So uh, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't come to that, but uh, you know where to find me. Thank so, you uh, so much. Thanks again, Tyler, for reaching out. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. Uh, yeah, that's about all for this one. Thank you guys for watching and thanks for learning with us.